this is the way I approach most massages because especially if you don't know the person or you're just starting out, the person might have come, they might have been traveling across the city or they've got all sorts of stuff going on in their mind and their you know, relationship issues or whatever, business issues or, or political issues or whatever th thoughts are going on. Right? We've got different hemispheres of our brain if you look at different brain wavelengths, right? Um, the outer hemisphere is a lot of electrical activity and some people are just like a fucking, you know, so much going on that they can't relax, right? So most people are like that to one degree or another. So one of the areas I like to start when I'm doing a face and head massage is here. Uh, we talked about the connection of here with here before, uh, and we can feel a nice little band often in people right in here. Right on the eyebrow there, yeah, so just below the eyebrow actually. But the most important thing is to feel this little band, okay? And depends on how tight that is, is how much congestion is in this area. And as I say, in Ayurvedic medicine, it's a very important area called the third eye chakra. Another technique we can use as well as pulling it back is to hold the sinuses just below there, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I can caress through here and drain those sinuses around the cheekbone, yeah. So I spent a lot of time just really feeling this. And again, with face and head massage, don't just go through the motions. A lot of people like to think, oh, okay, I just do two strokes here, one stroke here. Feel the tension, okay? Feel what's going on. Feel where there's a blockage and try and shift it. What you're doing right now, would you do that at the start or at the end? Either. This, this is depth, either, either time? Yeah, well, we know that Terry's not too tight. So he, and he can handle it. How's the pressure out of 10 for you, Terry? They're on 10s. 10s? On 9.9s. 9.9s, yeah. So we've got a little bit of give there. And here I'm just rotating. It's dissolving, it's getting softer. Yeah. So you're holding the center of the head there. Yeah. And I'm just really paying a lot of attention to this tension through mm -hmm. here. So I could even, I could hold spots and just shift that energy. Again, I'm feeling the blockage or the energy underneath the, in the, that's making it tight and I'm trying to, I'm pushing it with it, you know. And again here. I'm caressing through there. You think the face can hold just as much as the toes? Oh yeah, I mean it's just different, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, but yeah. I always think five-pointed star, you know. Okay, I'll, I'll have a feel of the other side. I mean, you can feel how much you're, you, you know, you're holding in here, even though the rest of your body's not super tight. But yeah. this is this is pretty tight. I did feel more pain on this side, though. Did you? Yeah. Or maybe you're just not looking now. It feels the same yet. Yeah. This is a great technique too for cleaning sinus congestion. But in general, people hold a lot in their heads. As I say, to me, <clears throat> getting to be really good at head massage is pretty much about tuning into energy because there's only so much you can feel on a very you know, base level, right? Like, oh, a tiny little band here, a bump here, and that'll keep you on a very superficial level, right? So you want to, again, just really feel what's going on with the energies here that are creating the tension. And this more so than anywhere with the head. What's that you just thrown? Bit of bad shit. Yeah, yeah bad shit. Stuff that I'm clearing out of him. Mm -hmm. We can do these techniques in different orders. There's no one particular order. I'm just feeling like he's got a very tight jaw here. And again, we can see he's still able to, to breathe into it. He's not tightening up against me. 
I can get him to open his jaw. That's it. And we can feel quite a lot of tightness through here. This can be a very sensitive area, so build up to it slowly. Don't go, again, like what Terry was saying, you know, when you're going in deep with people, gradual build up, all right? And feel and respect where their limitations are. I know how painful this can be in the jaw, so don't go really hard, but he feels tight in here, okay? I can also then come up and follow that up from the jaw and even hold points in here. Again, I'm quite aware I'm probably expanding his horizons a little bit, but he's still able to breathe. That's our indicator. He's, he's not tightening up against me, right? That's the real 10. Some people go, oh, that's a 10, that's a 10, that's a 10, but they don't know what a fucking 10 means. We're talking about, can you let go? Can you still breathe while I'm working on you? Breathe, keep, right? Yeah, breathe, keep. Yeah. Breathe, scream, fart, yeah. you know, whatever. Remember when you're working on the face, don't breathe on their face, okay? I, I'm not turning to the side in this case because you guys are there, right? But any energy I'm picking up, I'm sorry, I'm just breathing it out. I can hold those, that tight jaw as well. And then just slowly sliding and caressing that tension. How's the pressure? 9.9. 9.9, okay. You have this natural gift of knowing exactly what the limitation is. Yeah. Have you been doing this for a while? A couple of years, yeah. Mm -hmm. This guy taught me. Mm. That, I think, is also the, uh, one of the skills of being a good practitioner, is knowing exactly where, sensing it, and knowing exactly where their, their tin is. I can come in and squeeze the ear. So tight jaws, this area here, we've got a tight jaw. We get a, a lot of people get a lot of congestion here. In between here is the ears. Okay, so <clears throat> there is a whole uh, thing of ear reflexology mm -hmm. as well. Okay. You can do both at the same time, or you can just focus on one. Right now, I'm just focusing on the other side. And I'm squeezing, and I'm pulling. One time, somebody said to me, oh, everything hurt except the ears. Mm. And I said, I haven't done them yet. <laughs> <laughs> because he was thinking, oh, there's no nerves in the cartilage. But it still hurts, <laughs> right? And it's not even tendon or muscle, is it? It's cartilage. So it's an interesting thing, you know, a lot of people who are, I call them materially obsessed massage therapists here are thinking it's all about the muscle, the tendon. It's not, it's the energy. I'm, I'm an energetic massage therapist. My training's in the Eastern modality, so. I just think it's, people have no vision, you know. But there's a lot going on in people's there's, ears. There's tension in the ears for sure. Oh yeah. But is it muscular tension? No. Oh, okay. <coughs> ear, ear acupuncture, or ear, you know, people put ear, it's ear reflex all yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, check it out on Google. It's like an upside down baby, basically. But I don't think like that anymore. I just think, where is it tight? Where's the energy? I'm not getting too caught up in my mind about what spot. No, I'm just like, oh, I feel energetic congestion here. Let me either hold it, let him breathe into it, or hold it, let me pull it out. and it's gonna produce a huge benefit to this whole area. You know, a lot of people get headaches, like through here. Go right up into here. How's it feeling, Terry? Wonderful. Good. This side. Excuse me. As I say, I'm, you know, always think of yourself as an energy conduit when you're working with people too. It's going to come into you. So try and get rid of it right away. Breathe it out, but not on the person. Always be aware of your breath on the person's face. I've had a lot of face massage, and all I'm feeling is, fuck, that person's breathing all over my face. And it feels like somebody's taking a shit, you know? <laughs> Energetically, it's like, Ugh, you know? And it could also be their bad breath, especially smokers. You know? So be aware of your breath especially near the face. 
Okay, now I'm gonna come back into his jaw. here are very powerful and so what I often do is just hold them and move the head. Sure. I call it a, you know it's a so it's a sort of pressure point in under the okay. cheekbone um, but you know a lot of this area here can get quite tight and, and energetically charged all the gum just above the gum line actually. A lot of people can get toothache through yeah. stressful times and it's not oh, really yeah, teeth, teeth, teeth yeah. grinding. Now I can also come into his scalp. So with a scalp, we can often feel little bumps. So what we're doing with them is just rolling over them. Again, with people with hair, what we want to do is move that scalp over the bump. See how I'm, I'm keeping contact, like on this side, I'm keeping contact with the scalp. If I start doing this on hairy people, it's more like scratching. you're going to scratch and you're going to pull their hair. Okay. So with a bald head, you can just get in there and just, you know, you can move your hands around because you're not worried about pulling the hair. Okay, this is a really nice technique too. Learned this originally in Shiatsu, but it's, it's great because there's two meridian lines in Shiatsu that come through here, even though we can't feel them as bands. Remember what I was saying about in acupuncture, there's, there's, there's lines coming through here. So that's what, what I'm doing here. And I'm using my body weight to lean in. It feels completely different to lean in with my body weight through here on an energetic level. Feels quite good, Terry? Yes. Whereas if I, if I pushed in, it, it's not as nice. It still could be good. But it's, you feel the difference? Yeah, like yeah. leaning in better. Yeah, leaning in is way better. We were taught, when I, when I learned Shiatsu, we were taught to always come from our Hara. And our Hara is this area of Shiatsu. So my energy is coming from here, not just like this, but from my Hara. So what I'm doing now is just, again, trying to find out where he's still holding tightness in his head. It could be little bumps in here. This is why I say it's, this is an area you really want to be able to just tune into what's happening underneath that scalp with the, with the tension. I don't know if Dave showed you the hot iron rod through the head. It's a powerful technique which we, we use to create an energy that goes right into the middle of the brain. Okay. It's done like that. And then it's like with Qigong where you create a Qi ball like that, if anybody's ever done Qigong. This is like creating a laser beam. Okay. And once I get those points, then I usually get to walk there. See, I'm going in a bit firmer. And then I can lift up his neck. If you don't have a, a nice padded belly, you can hold um, the head with the hands. And this is where I was saying I could start to diagnose from as well. I could start to feel how tight is he in these bands? How tight is he here? How tight is he back here? Whether that's going to come to his arms, whether that's going to then come to his legs. Okay, so lots of stuff, information we can get from the neck. We can do this move where we support below the neck like this. Get him to breathe in. Gently 
hold the neck and then work back into here. Do you want your neck uh, adjusted? Yeah. So this is a technique I'll show you later, okay? But I, I do like to combine this with this. Um, and you can see there just the stretch alone. It wasn't as much a, technically that wasn't an adjustment. A little bit at the end was. But they didn't, that didn't even make them go. It was the stretch because of all this preliminary work. So once I've done that, I've got a certain stage of relaxation happening with his head, where he's like, what the fuck? I don't know what's going on anymore. All right, how do you feel? Chilled? Good. Then I can start to come in and do my, my breathing. So I've got him in a peaceful fit, strength, uh, frame of mind, and you can, you can see, th does he look more relaxed? Like in his, he looks more chilled, right? When I first work on somebody's belly, I go softly and I connect and I feel with this part of my energy center here and coming into the belly. Okay? And I just sort of make a connection. It's like, hi, I'm here, I'm on your belly. We don't do anything fast and pokey on the belly. We build up slowly. But what I'm gonna do is several different techniques. I can do my kneading like this, or I can do my assisted belly breathing. And with the assisted belly breathing, I get him just to take a deep breath in. Starting off slow and gentle. And then I get him to breathe in again. And a bit firmer. But again, he's letting me in there, so he's not tightening up against me. If he's tightening up, I gotta go more gentle. On I a bigger tummy, I can even use two hands. I did tighten up a little bit on that one. Did you? Yeah. I'm actually a bit tight right now. Yeah, you are, especially like in here. Yeah. So this can give us a good diagnosis as well. All right. If he's resisting, if it's a bit sore, I could go, okay, I need to come to that toe, for example, which was probably the toe we were figuring out he was a bit tight on. So big toe belly band, for example. <laughs> So we can, we can do more gentle sort of kneading, and again, we can just get him to breathe in. Fighting you a little bit. Yeah, so we'll go, so we'll go easier. Slower, yeah. yeah. Let him catch his breath a couple times. A little bit protective of the area because I had ulcerative colitis. Oh, did you? 2012. Yeah. So I still feel some sensitivity in my colon sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm quick to, I'm quick quick to, to tighten up. Yeah. Yeah. So you just got to be a little bit slower and softer as well. What did you have, sir? Ulcerated colitis. Ulcer. 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 So we'll just take it a bit easy. Yeah, that's better. We're going to do some rocking. Again, we're just trying to loosen up whatever's going to come away nice and easy. Okay, and then we're going to be left with our more chronic tension, which is then where we're going to then proceed after we've done this. And we're also getting him breathing deeply. So you can see, you can see he's doing well because his, his belly's completely rising. That's what we're looking for, right? He's not chest breathing. He's rising with the, the belly's rising, which is a good thing. And that sets the rhythm. And then I can also, like I said, diagnose. If I come back later and I've done his legs, then I could get in deeper. I could get in, on, on Terry, he's got a, a slightly bigger belly, so I could use perhaps an elbow. Most of the time I wouldn't do that. But I'm not gonna do that right away because of the sensitivity and the fact that the tension is still anchored. Right. So would you leave the stomach <coughs> alone if someone did have uh, recently a flare of the bottom of Yeah, if it was a recent, recent thing or, yeah, or an operation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cured many years ago, or but you yeah. leave it well alone. Yeah. Yeah. And anything where it's sore, sore you yeah. just work yeah, somewhere else. So I can also do things like assisted belly breathing. If, if I have the, the strength, I can lift up his legs and then either do oh, it. that's too much for that's my too much, yeah. But later, once he's, he's a bit more relaxed, I can actually come in like that and work the different bands. Okay. Or I can just lift up his legs like this and do. 
but again, more gentle. We just got to figure out his the right. If somebody came to you for the first time, would you work on the head first, and then would you go to the stomach as it's quite a sensitive area for people? Would you do that on a on a first time that you'd seen somebody, or would yeah. you go to elsewhere and then do that? Either way. At another time. Either way, if they're all sensitive about having their stomach worked, mm -hmm. I could go somewhere else. It's not a hard fact. If they're they're like going, oh, I don't want my stomach worked. Yeah. Then I'm not gonna be rigid and and you know. But yeah, I think it's a great way because it gets them deep breathing. Do you go there straight after the head? Yeah, yeah. And because it opens up this. <clears throat> see, we want this central energy channel. There's in Ayurvedic medicine, we've got this uh, central energy channel called the Shashumna, yeah. which comes all the way from the base right up to the crown chakra. And one of the major things I think is important is to open up the energy flow in that area. And so by calming down the mind and then getting him breathing and bringing his awareness out of his head and into his belly, yeah. it's a great way to start a massage. Of course, in between the head and the belly, we've always got the heart chakra, which is also an important area. But see, now I could go anywhere. But you wouldn't completely on his front, uh, on, his, on his back first, and before you turned him over, you wouldn't start on his front, particularly. You'd do the head first and then work on the whole front, then turn him over. Yeah, usually. Yeah. Yeah. I find most people are tighter on their front than their back. Okay. And also a lot of back tension actually comes from the front. Right. Interestingly enough, so because I've had people that like you could work on their back for ages and you won't loosen up the tension, but if you get rid of the tension in the belly and the chest, like a lot of people will be tight exactly opposite here, because right. you think um, this is a major en energy center right here, because at the back you've got the outer little finger band joining with the, the other two bands, the Achilles and the big toe, yeah. and in here you've also got quite a major energy center kind of coming in here with, with junctions of <coughs> and a wristband coming up to meet in here. Yeah. And like I said, this very important diagnostic area here is the heart chakra. Yeah. So when I see it's very concaved, um, then I think, well, we need to open that up. Yeah. And it's usually associated with depression and things like that too. So the heart chakra is related a lot to sort of joy and, uh, you know, just, it's in Ayurveda, it's, yeah, yeah, optimism. And when, it, when you see it sunken in here, yeah. You think of uh, depression, but you think, okay, how are we going to open that up? Partly it's going to be from that inner wristband, partly it's going to be from here. It's my sunken? Very, very slightly. Like, because you can feel how that's quite tight just in there. Yeah. But it's not a huge amount, right? Like, it's just a very slight, especially like right there, you yeah, can feel how... Yeah, a lot of tension in there. Yeah, yeah. So there's just something kind of going on in here. I don't feel any depression. Or... No, it's not, it's not that big. Right? But he, you know, it would still be good, good to open that up a little bit more. And, you know, enjoy that. Yeah. So that's how I would start, and then it, it, I could go anywhere. Depends on how long I have. Depends on what his priorities are. What my, you know, we work together and go. He might go. Oh, I really want you to open this area. I, I really want you to open up that foot. That's tight. I feel like you need this the most. Yeah. So then I could go. Okay. In a wrist band. Yeah. Where's it? Which which finger is it coming from? Because it's probably coming from one, maybe more. Let's have a quick drink of water. Do you want me to proceed a little bit now with a bit of treatment as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. But from this point on, see, this could be a nice standard thing that you do for everybody. And then from here, it's which limb do you want to work on? Yeah. He's got a request, which I always like to, you know, honor, that he wants this area to open up. Right? But for a female, then, you would just work more on their stomach, the big belly band, and... Right, because we don't actually we don't actually have to do much work here. Uh, if anything, if we if he's got something going on here, if it, if it was a woman, we would still she might go, yeah, you know, I got something going on here. But we would pick that up here and go, okay, yeah, you're very tight in here, or you're very tight here, because again, it's a junction, so we need to figure out which one's causing it, and then we would just come to the source of it. So with that, I'm sus I'm suspecting one of the fingers that make up the inner wristband is tight. Right. So then I'm going to, I'll have a feel of the little finger even though that's not making it up. And that feels, notice he's got a, a pretty good range of motion there. Remember I was showing you some of the other people? So that's pretty good. Let's feel what these ones are like. Yeah. All right. 
not as good. No way. Nowhere near as good. You can feel that. It feels clunky. Yeah, it's not, it's not as good. This one's not as good. So big difference between the little finger and that's the range of motion that we're getting out of that. A bit better now, just clicked. So, and this one's a bit tight too, but not as bad. So my, my first suspicion that where this would be coming from would be this joint here. So with that, I would definitely want to get a chopstick out. 